Thank you, Dr. Tim. And I did write to them again and ask them about the chat room, so hopefully they'll look at it instead of telling me to clear my cash. (laughs) Yeah, well, we're still held in the show whether we can chat with people or not, so thank you for that. That's right. Blessings. Thanks. Bye. So welcome, everybody, to the second hour of MindShifters Radio. Today is Tuesday, March the 14th, 2023. And our call-in number is 569-993581. And press 1, and that puts you into queue to talk to us. And we'd love to hear your comments and questions because that makes this your show. We'll give Michael a moment to get dialed in. I will tell you ahead of time that tomorrow we will be playing something pre-recorded because Michael has an appointment, and I have a feeling that they're going to be releasing my dad from the hospital into rehab and also have Aria tomorrow, so it's going to be a busy day tomorrow. So we will be playing something as a pre-recorded show tomorrow. And at this time, I'm going to welcome Michael. Yes, and those pre-recorded shows are always some of our best. So maybe, um, you know, Jeannie, one of the most powerful worksheets that we've ever done on the show, if you recall, goes back to, I think the very first one we did and the very first one in the list of special shows for um, where we did worksheets with people it was with a medical doctor. Um, that might be the, the show to play. Uh, I, know we, I don't think we played that in quite a while, have we? Uh, I'm not sure. I think that was with um, Dr. August or something like that. I'll have to look it up. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Dr. Lee awesome. August from 2011. Right. Yep. So I think that one might be the one that's that's still to me one of the most powerful worksheets that's uh, that I've ever seen. So, and to watch how each time she starts to confront a goal and do something about it, she shifts from. And I won't get into too much detail about it, but she starts out thinking it's about something, touches in, and says, oh, it's surely about this. And then when she gets down to the bottom of it and actually cancels her goal, drops right into what the real issue is and you know the the games that the mind plays to keep us from seeing is there's a a quote from Carl Jung where he says something to the effect of that people will do anything in order to avoid facing their own souls in all this stories and hallucinations the mind can come up with to keep the truth hidden because whatever the truth is of what occurred when confronted embraced turns out it was not the truth at all but when embraced and loved it dissolves and there's where the forgiveness happens so you know, the the non being mind has all kinds of solutions. And the, the truth is that those solutions are none of the above. Well, it just won't work. So I'll check before I go into it. I've got some thoughts in that regard. Uh, I check with you to see if there's anybody in the phone queue with a hand up or anything happening in the chat room. Well, um, Magda and Ann's hands are up, but I know Magda was talking to Dr. Kim just prior to him hanging up, so, but I don't think he had gotten to end yet. So I'm going to try to throw my phone on. Welcome in. Okay. And Jeannie, maybe try hanging yes. up your phone and calling back in. You've got a, a flutter in your voice that makes it kind of hard to understand you. Okay, we'll do. Cool. All right. Hi. Hey there, young lady. Welcome. Hey, Did you have so, something to share yeah, with us? Respond. Well, I had something while the girls were talking to Dr. Tim. I don't know if Celinda is still on. It kind of had to do with the worksheet and thoughts and emotions. She, she is not on. Okay. Um, now I'll share with them with her tomorrow. Um, but but so go for it. What I, and she can always go back yeah, and listen and drop but, her a note. Yeah. What I had gleaned from you, Jeannie, and I was going to suggest to her that and they were talking about, you know, different ways, and, and Monta had shared a whole bunch of great different ways to also 
to that, and we talked about the feeling wheel, and that has helped me. But you, Jenny, had suggested back and end of things, and that's what I've found that's helpful when I can't identify my emotion. I'll put the thought down, you know, the story and the thought down, and then later the emotion comes, and so that's all I was going to suggest to her. Right on track. Yeah. For sure. Well, anyway, I'll see, if, I'll see if she heard it tomorrow, if I catch the show tomorrow, so. Cool. But thank you. Yes, thank All right. you, Jimmy, cause it's a... All right. Move on. <laughs> thank you. I'm complete. All right. Any other thoughts? No, I'm good. I'm ready to listen. Okay. Okay. Extending love in your direction, young lady. Good to hear your voice. All right, Ms. Jeannie, are we trying anything else? I've dialed back in. Is that any better? Oh, 2,000%. Yep. It was just right. kind of this flutter no, that was... No, but... So, so you're right. clear now. Okay. No other hands are up. Cool. Well, I'm going to go back. You know, to me, one of the most important lessons in the Course in Miracles is, and one of the most misunderstood, is the lesson: What is the world? And. The reason I think it's misunderstood is because people think that their eyes look out and see what's out there. I mean, you must be seeing what's out there. It's so detailed, and you can reach your hand out and touch it, so that must be true. And the thing to get is that's all a fraud. Yes, detailed, and it's a reflection the, the world we see, the, the perceptual constructs of the mind are a reflection of the content of our minds based upon data coming in from the actuality, from the world of energy. You know, what you can reach out and touch, you know, I, I can touch the, the phone, I can touch the hanger the phone's on, I can touch the, the wire that's coming out of the bottom of the phone, and I say, well, that... My eye shows me this, therefore that must be what's there because I can touch it. And it's really important to get that information, the actuality, the energy system that is what the creator created, is a fact. It's true. It's actual. But when I feed data from it into my brain or my mind, and the mind functions through every cell in the structure, when I feed data from it, i.e. I touch it, or I have light energy that comes into my eye, whatever that data is resonates information stored in my mind from the past. That information that's resonated, and you know, let's say I'm interacting with somebody who's tapped into a power person dynamic in my life. And as they do that, I insist that they must be the cause of what I'm feeling. But they haven't touched me. They haven't come near me. In fact, I may be talking to them on the phone, and they are literally on the other side of the world. But I have the audacity to say, you made me sad. You made me afraid. You made me angry. You hurt me. Now, when you think about how really foolish that is, there's somebody on the other side of the world that has this little plastic and glass and metal box, and they flap a flap of skin in their throats that moves airwaves. The airwaves cause a thing we call a microphone, which has a little ceramic capacitor in, to vibrate and translate the frequencies at which the air molecules are moving into an electrical impulse. The phone then sends that out to a tower in, let's say, in, you know, Beijing, China. And there's a cell tower. And that signal carrying the signature of the air molecules that were moving as a result of this slap of skin in my throat 
going, are transferred to that tower, and then they're transmitted all the way to Bristol, Virginia. And there's a tower here that receives that signal. Actually, it's gone through several towers to get here. And then it does what we call broadcast. It sends that signal out, and there's an antenna on my phone that receives that signal. And that electrical signal is then translated into something that causes a little plastic cone called a speaker to vibrate air molecules. And now those air molecules vibrating hit my ear, and I've got a drum in there that moves in response to that motion. And then there's some bones that, when they move, set up an electrical signal that then resonates something in my mind. And if what resonates in my mind is based in corrupt data, some form of hostility, fear, pain, or trauma, I actually speak back what I call speaking into this little box of metal and plastic and glass that I have here, and I transmit back a signal that when it gets to the ears in Beijing says, you hurt me. Now, really, think about that for a minute, folks. I mean, how silly a conclusion is that? Now, it doesn't matter, and, and you know, to, to break through a brainwash, remember that each and every one of us, by being born into this game, are, by the age of about three or four, card-carrying members of the One World Church of Blame, the One World Religion of Blame. You've heard it over and over and over. You saw it on the TV. You saw the president do it. You saw the politician do it. You saw the preacher do it. You saw your parents do it. You saw your siblings do it. You saw your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, and the blame game was on. And by three or four, you know that whatever is going on in your mind that is the root, that is coming from the root of your pain is caused by someone else. And the mind is a total and complete liar. But it literally, when brain cells fire, creates the world of perception, the world you think you see out there. And the truth is you've never seen anything with your eyes. You can no more see out through your eyes than you can go. To, the eyes are just an antenna that receives light energy. You can no more see out your eyes than if I went over and pulled the antenna off of my TV and I looked into the hole in the antenna wire and, and I'm gonna, I believe I'm going to be able to see what's happening around my house through the antenna on the roof of my house. I mean, it's silly. The eye is no different. However, the information that comes into the eye or the ear or taste or touch or smell resonates brain cells and brain cells firing. And remember that in order for brain cells to fire, they have to be there. So in this instant, when brain cells are firing, if they were there, they were there in the past. Therefore, when something in me that's from the past fires in me, it literally creates this world of perception, a whole world that I think I see out there until I get that it's not out there. And as long as I'm a member of the one world religion of blame, you made me, remember that's our definition of denial. Denial is when I think or speak as though something outside of me is a cause of something that's moving inside of me. And when I hold that to that denial, I have to hide or dissociate the content of my own mind, the true content, what's underneath, in order to follow the instruction that I've given my mind that says mind. You know, here's the long form of the instruction. Mind, I know that I have pain that I haven't resolved. I've admitted that. I've even told people how you know, deeply that's impacted me. But tell you what, mind, you're not allowed to show me that that belongs to me. I want you to build a world. I want you to build a whole construct that gives me in detail a picture of that body that I think is Harry over there, or Bill, 
or Mary or Hortense, I, I want you to build a picture of that body and show me how it's causing my pain. So now that I've believed that something outside of me is the cause of what's moving inside of me, like that person in China is the cause of what's moving inside of me and the cause of my pain. Well, wait a minute. No, what I really said was, no, is that little piece of plastic that's vibrating in the speaker. That's the cause of my pain. It's like, what a load of crap. And get out of this game of blame. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's through the, the phone with the person in China or the person that's in the room with you. It's the same thing. They vibrate a little tap, a flap of skin in their throat and they're in the room with you and it vibrates a little drum in your ear and the drum causes these bones to move. That creates an electrical signal in response to resonance and that electrical signal, brain cells fire, and your world shows you, your, your mind, pardon me, shows you a world. Now, if we go to that world that I, that, or that lesson, pardon me, that I say is probably one of the most important and the most misunderstood lesson to the course, what is the world? Here's what the lesson says. It opens with the words, the world is false perception. The course is not aiming forgiveness. You know, when you reach your hand out and you touch your phone, there's an act, that's part of what the creator created. And you do that. The course is not in, a, aiming forgiveness at that. It's aiming forgiveness at the world of false perception. The constructs in your mind, the pictures in your mind that your mind made up that you think are outside of you, but are nothing but projections of unresolved pain from the past. So again, the world is false perception. That lesson goes on, and you can go to our uh, YouTube channel and search for what is the world, We've actually got a, a two-hour video of what is the world that's in our data collection or our, our catalog. But you can go to YouTube, put in Michael Rice, and look for what is the world. And it's about a 30-minute, it's a really concise 30-minute presentation. It'll give you everything you need to know. If you want to go deeper, yes, buy the video, but it's not necessary. So here's where the core, that lesson goes. The world is false perception. It is born of error, and it has not left its source. That lesson goes on to say is, that world will remain no longer than the thought that gave it birth is cherished. In other words, you and I have this device that converts thoughts into pictures. Just like your TV converts frequencies that come through an antenna into pictures, you know, if I look at the TV and the picture that's there and I say, oh, there's a guy with a gun, there's no guy with a gun. The frequency was in the signal that came into the TV, and the signal directed the luminescence on the screen and the transistors and all the things that go on in there to produce what looks like an image of a gun. A frequency moving in your mind does exactly the same thing. It's not there, but it sure looks like it. So what this lesson is saying is your mind has converted a thought into a picture, and you're believing the picture is of something outside of you. But the pictures your mind creates are not outside of you. That's why in this lesson, the Course says, it has not left its source, and it will remain no longer than the thought that gave it birth is cherished. So the question becomes, what needs to be done to get rid of that thought that generates this world of false perception? Now, remember, we've talked many times from our codependence to interdependence intensive there are several pseudo-solutions of this non-being mind. The number one pseudo-solution is, if I could just figure this out. And people will sit and they'll figure and they'll figure for decades, wasting decades of their lives trying to figure out this world of false perception. Is that the solution? No. 
how about if I talk about it? Is that the solution? No. How about if I explain it? Is that the solution? No. How about if I convince others that I know and they don't? Is that the solution? How about if I use words to tell the truth about what I call the truth about it? Is that the solution? You've probably guessed by now that my answer is going to be, once again, no, <laughs> because it's, it is no. How about if I argue using symbols of symbols to prove that I know? Is that the solution? If you listen to most people's conversations, they'll tell you that those things are the solution. And they are all solutions from the world of false perception constructed by your mind to avoid looking at what needs to be looked at. Until we wake up from that world, we will do everything possible to avoid confronting and looking at what's underneath it. And it's time for us to wake up and realize that we've been taught by the one world religion of blame totally and completely false solutions to the game. So, truth is, none of the above will work. Explaining, trying to understand it, trying to figure it out, is 100% futile. To try to resolve the pain or held trauma through any of those mechanisms, notice we have to use words, and the Course tells us that words are symbols of symbols, that your perception is a symbol of the actuality. So I reach my hand out and I touch my phone. There's the actuality. That's part of the actual world that the Creator created. And my brain shows me a picture of a phone. That picture that my brain generates out of what the phone resonates from my past, the actuality of the phone resonates from my past, perception based in past data. And then I take that symbol, the phone, at least the picture my brain shows me of what's there, if I could actually see what was there, I'd see this whirring mass of electrons, protons, neutrons, and light, the actuality that the creator created, I would not see a phone. And then I attach a word to that symbol, and now I'm living in symbols of symbols twice removed from the actuality. Remember yesterday we talked about how the Course uses words and says they cannot express what lies beyond the symbols. And then the Course goes on and says, yet there is no answer. Remember, we're building this on yesterday's lesson. There is no answer. Remember that lesson says... I'm looking at that section in the teacher's manual on clarification of terms. That lesson says, you're going to ask all kinds of questions in this course, and the course isn't going to answer them. That's not what it's for. And then it says, seek only this, and let not theology delay you. Seek only what? The experience. What's the experience? How is it created? Well, if you follow logically from that explanation of the world is false perception, it is not let its, its source, it will remain no longer than the thought that gave birth is cherished. You've got to let go of cherishing that thought. You've got to let go of, the, of having a use for that thought, that errant thought. 
And you've got to learn how to collapse the false world, not try to figure it out from the false world, not try to explain it from the false world. You've got to know how to collapse that false world. What is collapsing the world of perception called? It's called forgiveness. The Course says that's the only single-edged sword. Think about that. The only single-edged sword. There's only one. All the efforts to figure it out, to convince somebody else that they're the problem, will never work. So when this lesson, What is the World, talks about the world is false perception, it's not talking about a place. It's talking about a hologram born of a state of mind. Born of error, it says. Not the world of bodies, because such a world doesn't exist. A body is a symbol of what the Creator created. It's false perception. It is born of error. It remains inside of you. So bodies only exist in the world of perception. The world of pictures output from errant thoughts in the mind. It's another section of the course that comes to mind that talks about how could you teach yourself so different, something so different from what you've already taught yourself? Can you do that? There's only one solution. You've got to learn how to collapse the world of false perception. What we call the material world is just false perception. It's born of error. It appears to exist. And in fact, it's nothing but a false construct, an appearance generated by my mind. It's a holographic projection that is nothing but a reflection of unforgiven content acquired from the past. There's no life in holograms. There's no life in symbols. There's no life in the multitude of words to try to explain something that doesn't exist. Well, Michael, where does that leave us? That's, that's a pretty tough place to be. What am I going to do with it then? Because everywhere I turn, I see it. Yeah, that's because you don't even need to turn. It's all generated by your mind. Yes, well, if I turn my head that way and I look at something that I never wanted to look at, gee, that's going to resonate something in my mind that I've never wanted to look at, and I'm going to have to start to look at it. I mentioned yesterday that the uh, one of the quotes that Helen Schuckman, the woman who brought the course into existence, said was the course was for five or six people, meaning that not many people would ever actually come to comprehend it. I spend a lot of time answering posts on Facebook in Course in Miracles groups. And if you read through those posts, you'll see that most everybody thinks, well, all I have to do is convince somebody that I know, or all I have to do is convince somebody that their problem, or all I have to do, all I have to do, all I have to do, all I have to do. And there are a thousand pseudo solutions. And nobody wants to confront the real solution because to confront the real solution means you have to collapse the false overlays that make what you've not resolved palatable by blaming someone else. Or blaming yourself, same thing. And you've got to collapse that world and allow what's hidden underneath it, the source of that world. There's a Another line in the Course of Miracles says, you may wonder why you must look upon your hatred and realize its full extent. I've had a lot of people who talk to me about the Course and, oh, it's all nicey-nicey and goody-goody and all about love. It's like, no, the Course says you must look upon your hatred. You must look upon your rage. You must look upon your trauma and realize its full extent. But if you look upon it, 
through perception, you're looking upon it indirectly. You're in an indirect relationship with it. You're feeling the pain of it. You're experiencing the pain of it, but you're not confronting what underlies it. You're not in direct relationship with it yet. So there's really only one question, one important question, and that is, and you know, we can phrase it in different ways, but it's all the same question. How do I collapse the world of false perception? And collapsing it is forgiveness. How do I forgive? How do I remove what's at the root of this? These constructs, these holograms that seem so detailed and so real, how do I remove it from my mind? Well, once again, I'll suggest you go to our YouTube channel, put in Michael Rice, and look for What is the World? I kind of go through this lesson that we've just talked about here in a different detail. And then I get into, here's how you forgive. Here's how it works. Forgiveness, now the world will tell you, and, and most people are still thinking in terms of, oh, I need to let somebody off the hook because my mind is producing this. Excuse me, there is nobody to let off the hook. You do not lead to let, any, let anybody off the hook for anything, ever. I mean, if you choose to, that's okay, as long as you know that what you're doing, if you do that, is pardoning someone. Okay, so I'm going to let you off the hook for what you've moved in me, but I need to confront the fact that what's moving in me belongs to me, not you. And I need to forgive what's moving in me. I need to remove what's moving in me. The latter part of that 30-minute YouTube video is where I explain exactly how forgiveness works. Tomorrow's show will be one of the most powerful forgiveness processes I've ever seen. So make sure you catch it. And or you can go to our website, whyagain.org, and you'll find links to about... 20 or so different radio shows where either Jeannie or myself or Dr. Tim has walked somebody through the forgiveness process step by step by step. The latest worksheet, we've simplified it. I suggest people use that worksheet. We've simplified it. And the essence of it is to recognize that your mind shows you a tiny, tiny fragment of what's going on, and it constructs it according to your instructions. If you live in a world of, oh, this is so terrible, somebody else must be to blame, I never want to have to look at this directly, then, again, you live in a world of false perception. And notice you have a goal. My goal is to make sure that my mind shows me that somebody else is to blame. And now I produce a perception, now I believe that it's true. This is called the world of make-believe. First you make it up, then you believe it, and then your mind goes out and gathers evidence to prove that it's true, and it's all based in a lie. How does the lie start? What's the core of getting rid of it? Well, you'll notice that you have never been upset with anyone. I mean, unless you're just a generally miserable person, you're pretty happy with most everybody when they're doing everything that you want them to do. It's when someone isn't fulfilling a goal that you have for them. That your mind uses the corrupt data of some form of hostility or fear to produce its perception. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is because goals are the thing that recruit content from the mind, dissociated content from the mind, to build the mind's projections, to literally to build perception. That's why the core of the worksheet, and it seems so counterintuitive because 
I mean, we're all we we were all born and bred as members of this one world religion of blame, and we believe the perceptions, the constructs of our mind that has everybody being at fault for what's going on in my physiology. How can somebody? I mean, short of somebody punching me in the nose, how can somebody be responsible for what's going on in my physiology? That's just ludicrous. That's stupid. That's silly. Oh, but Michael, you didn't hear what they said. Right, I didn't hear what they said. I didn't have to, but guess what? If I heard what they said, my mind would produce a different perception than your mind does. And you're in trauma because of what your mind projects. You shouldn't remember the Course says, projection makes perception. You're in so much pain because there's something in you that you've not resolved that when somebody speaks those words that violate your goal, that's what resonates in you, and that terrible pain comes up, integrated into your brain's image of them, and you really believe that it's them, and it's a lie. All perception is a lie. You can get to a state, as you do your work, of what we call corrected perception where the information that the mind uses to build the world that you see, the world of perception, is accurate about what's going on in the world. However, it's still not what's going on in the world. As you do your work, you clean up the hostility and fear. Your perception gets cleaner and cleaner and cleaner, but it's still all a reflection of the past, an accurate past will give you a relatively accurate perception about what's going on in the world, but it still won't be the live experience of what's going on in the world. Got to give that world up. That world of false perception. How do you give it up? Well, in the Aramaic language, the word forgive is shebag or shabak, and it literally translates to cancel. Well, this person that's a problem in life, do I cancel them? Mm, that's suicide. Probably not a good idea. Okay, well, the only other person in the room is me, so do I cancel me? Mm, that's suicide. Probably not a good idea. Murder, suicide, no, no, not a solution. What can I cancel? I can specifically identify the goal that's driving my perception the thing that causes my mind to use this particular pain data, the thing that recruits from my unconscious what I've dissociated from and never wanted to deal with and maybe goes back 50 generations to somebody who had this horrific experience and I'm still carrying around the energy pattern of that because nobody in all of those generations has had any clue how to access and how to remove that from their structures. It's been passed and passed and passed and here I am experiencing it today and that 50 generations ago. Geez, how many years is that? That's a thousand years. They, you know, count a generation is 20 years, 50 times. So it's a thousand years ago. Why am I experiencing this? Because nobody has confronted, has accessed that energy directly. Everybody that's dealt with it because they didn't have the tools has projected into their brains and mutual others and made up a whole false world to live out of. How do I do this? Shebag, cancel. I cancel the goal. But Michael, I, I just wanted that person to cherish me and honor me, and you're telling me I should cancel that goal? That sounds totally, completely stupid because I deserve that. And it's like, you know something? I agree with you. 2,000%, you deserve it. But it's not stupid to cancel it when you realize that every time you load it in your mind, there's a file in your mind on being cherished and honored that contains this unresolved generational pain. And every time you load that goal, it causes those brain cells to fire, and you're in pain over what your mind shows you is that you're not being cherished and honored. So when you cancel the goal, you collapse the false perception, the world of error that is not left at source. And you get to touch in directly to the thought that gave it birth is cherished. And 
And you'll notice in step four in the worksheet, you bring love, conscious, active, and present. And then in step five, you cancel that goal. Step three, you've identified the goal. Step four, you brought love, present. Step five, you've canceled the goal. Now, you may not do that perfectly first. You may not be really good at getting love to come present. But as you do the process, you will strengthen in your ability in each of those three steps. And then when you cancel the goal, that whole perceptual construct that's based on something from the unconscious will collapse in on itself, and it will create a path way into that hidden part of your mind. A perfect visual for that, not a nice scenario, but it's a perfect visual. Everybody's got the visual. We all saw it a thousand times. Well, the younger people haven't because this goes back to 2001, to the 9-11 towers. And remember how that tower, I mean, it's an absolute impossibility, but it happened, or so we're told. At least I should say that it happened the way they told us it happened is an absolute impossibility. But the, the, the tower collapsed. We all watched it drop in, just collapse in on its own footprint. Your perception is that tower. The goal is the plane that hits the tower. When you cancel the goal, the tower collapses. The whole construct of your mind, the whole perceptual construct, drops in on itself and gives you access to its footprint. Notice that that tower just dropped right into its own footprint. When your perception drops into its own footprint, you remember there's a lesson in the course that says you must return your mind to the point where it happened, the trauma happened. Now, many people will go searching through their memory. They'll go lay on somebody's couch and they'll have this person ask them question after question after question, looking for the deep, dark, dirty, pained thing that happened to them, as though memory could serve it up. Well, your memory's not likely to serve up the experience that happened to somebody in your bloodline 50 generations ago. It can. I've seen it happen, but it's not likely you're going to have to be pretty skilled. That's a, that's a level of skill that comes late, late, late in using the tools. So returning your mind to the point where the error happened is not a function of memory. It is a function of forgiveness. When the tower of perception collapses in on its own footprint, its own footprint is exposed, the underlying why did the Course say you must look upon your hatred and realize its full extent? If you've got a perceptual construct, a tower of hatred, it's just because it doesn't stand on its own foundation. It's what's underneath it. So when you cancel the goal and the pain perception collapses, and recognize that many times you won't even know you're in pain perception. If you really become a good observer of yourself, you notice you're holding your breath, you notice that there's some kind of hostility or fear moving, even if it's subtle, probably pointed at someone else, but you probably won't even know you're there. You'll think this is just a natural way of being because, gee, this is what I've been doing all my life. This is what my parents did. This is what my siblings did. This is what everybody does. This is how everybody stays in false perception and refuses to deal with what has not left its source, which is the rooted pain in the unconscious, in what in the ancient teachings they called the heart or the desert. You have to spend time in that desert. The Jews wandering in the desert for 40 years. Do you really think that this group of very bright people who knew all about astronomy wandered in a 35-square-mile area for 40 years and didn't know how to get out? That's a silly pre precept. No, that story about the desert is a story about the unconscious. That word desert is a, a, a metaphor for the unconscious. Most people spend about 40 years there. Or if they're working with the Course, maybe 40 years working with the Course before they get it. And you remember that in order to get out of the desert into what they called the promised land, what had to happen? It said the old generation had to die off. The root of the word generation, genari, is cause. It doesn't mean everybody in old physical bodies has to physically die. Those energetic patterns that produce perceptions based in pain must be brought forward and exposed to love. Again, another thought from the Course. You must bring the world you do not want, the one you're hiding in your unconscious, in your desert, 
to the one you do. You must know how to access it. Here's how you access it. The world of false perception, the place, the, the root of that false perception must be brought forward in the presence of active love. That's why step three in the worksheet is identify the goal. Step four is bring love presence. Step five is cancel the goal. And then step 5B is ask for assistance to clean this up. Because when you realize this has been going on for perhaps 50 generations, and how much data is there in all the generations between you and that person? How many people are there? Billions. How are you going to figure that all out with a mind that only processes nine bits of information at a time? You can't do it. So 5B... There's a power in you that was called in Aramaic Rukhadikudja, defined in Aramaic as a feminine elemental force in you that undoes the effects of your errors and teaches you the truth. If you're willing to receive that. But if you still cherish that old hostile mind energy, remember? This world remain no longer than the thought that gave it birth as church. If you think, well, I'm going to keep this hostility because it might protect me in the future, then you're saying to that power that would undo it for you if you really wanted it undone, you can't touch that. That's mine. I'm keeping it. That's how I keep safe, I think. When, in fact, by holding that very energy of attack, I set up an energy field to draw somebody in to attack me. But as long as I'm in the mistaken belief that it's all somebody else's fault and I have to protect myself from them, because, of course, you could never trust anybody else. Oh, now we come across a power person dynamic of not being able to trust that your power person could be the space or hold the space for you. And likely, if you're a human on planet Earth today, they couldn't because they, too, came from the one world church of blame. And they, too, blamed you. Maybe the very, very earliest days of your life. Maybe even while you were still in the womb. Oh, if I didn't have to have this damn baby. Maybe that's the thought process that happened. Or maybe hearing the father that said, No, we don't need another child. Energy. It's all energy. How many generations has it been going on? So are you willing to give up the need to protect and defend yourself with hostility or fear and surrender to this power? Bring the world you do not want, the one that's underneath it, the one that the Course says you, know, you must look upon your hatred and realize its full extent because it doesn't stand on its own foundation. It's what's underneath it. And you get your mind back to what's underneath it by canceling the goal, identifying specifically and precisely in this moment of pain or trauma, the goal that you hold, canceling that goal, collapsing the tower of perception in on its own footprint and having access to what's in the desert, to what's in the unconscious, the root of the pained perception. And now... Step 5B in the worksheet, having invited that power to assist you in undoing what, you know, you know, listen to the ancient scriptures, look to the lives of the fathers for ours are but a shadow of theirs upon the earth. It doesn't just say your father, it says fathers, plural. Yours is a shadow of the theirs, plural, upon the earth. That's what perception is, it's just a shadow. And it covers up the truth that you were conceived in your creation of as love. The truth of who you are. Hold a newborn child and tap into its essence. And that's who you are. That's who each of us is. And so allow that power in you the feminine elemental force that undoes the effects of your ears and teaches you the truth to remove the root of that pain and not just the impact on your physiology and your chemistry and your mind and your emotions and your life and your relationships and your finances and your business. Not just remove that, but remove all of the effects of it within the world that you've experienced and maybe impacted others with. 
and allow that feminine elemental force to reach back through all 50 generations. Somebody has to give permission because free will given to human beings will never be violated. When you give permission, you may open the floodgates and go into a deep, deep healing crisis. And that's a wonderful thing, but it's not Dr. Feelgood. And that's why most people don't want to go there. Most people want to live in their nice, comfortable little worlds. Well, it's not comfortable. There's pain, of course. You get older and you have all the aches and pains, but that's just getting old, right? Baloney. It's got nothing to do with being old. It's got to do with the energy patterns that you hold. We've used from the DeCourcy Clinic in Cincinnati, Ohio, from back a half a century or more ago, where they did research on aging, and they said, time, quote, time is not toxic. Time has no effect on human tissue under any conditions. It is a belief in the effective time by those who subscribe to such a belief that acts as a poison. Aging doesn't exist as a function of time. It is a function of stored energies that are toxic to the energy system. As in the ancient Aramaic was explained, the wages of sin is death. Sin, remember now, before you go off on, you know, the Greek idea and all the, the wor one world church of blame trauma around sin, just realize what the word is. In Aramaic, it's an archery term. If you were on the archery range and you fired at a target and you missed the bullseye, the scorekeeper yelled, sin, you're off the mark. That's all it means. If you hold an off-the-mark energy, a little bit of hostility, a little bit of fear, people say, oh, well, you know, I'll keep a little bit of rage here just in case I need it. Well, if that rage is stored in your liver, guess what's happening to your liver? It's dying. If that rage is stored in your kneecap, guess what's happening to your kneecap? It's dying. If it's stored in your brain, guess what's happening to your brain? It's aging. It's dying. Or it appears to be aged, but it's not a function of time. And bringing back those energetic patterns to awareness is not a function of memory. It is a function of forgiveness. Collapse the tower of pain perception in on itself. Ask that feminine elemental force for assistance, whatever you call her. It's been called the higher power, the superconscious, the subconscious, the primordial X. Churchianity is, is translated as the Holy Spirit the higher power. There's a power in you that will do the work, but will not violate your will. Are you willing to give it all up, or do you still have a use for some of it? Do you still think you need it? Do you still distrust the people around you, though they've proven to you over and over and over and over again that they can be trusted totally? Do you still hold that they can't be trusted, and therefore you're going to keep that little bit of rage and that little bit of pain, that power person dynamic, you're going to keep it operating? Are you ready to trust enough? It's a great section in the course in the teacher's manual on the development of trust. So when you cancel the goal, the tower of perception collapses in on its own footprint, gives you access to the unconscious, to the desert, the part of your mind that holds what doesn't belong, which is in your body, and therefore, if it's of a diseased nature, sin, then your body is diseased, your tissue structure, your energy structure is diseased. Are you ready to access what appears to be something stored in the body, but is really just stored in this energy system? Remember, the body is just another perception, it's another construct of the mind. It doesn't exist. It's part of that world of false perception. Are you willing to cancel the goal, collapse that tower of pain perception, and as it drops in on itself, can you breathe, hold love present, and as you hold love present, can you remove, can you allow that energetic pattern based in pain and trauma to be removed, to be forgiven? And as it is forgiven, your physiology is freed from it. That can produce the instant transmutation of tissue from some form of horrible disease and suffering to perfectly healthy tissue 
which again, remember, is nothing but energy, in a fraction of a second. Do you have the willingness? Do you have the breath? Are you going to go there? Or does the world of false perceptions seem more attractive and, you know, finding somebody else to blame and recognizing that, you know, it's always somebody else's fault. Are you willing to give up your membership card in the one world religion of blame? Are you willing to stop trying to convince somebody else that there's a problem in your life and recognize that this is an energy that's moving in me? And I'm probably replicating a power person dynamic. And remember, the power person dynamic is instilled when three things happen. Usually it's between a parent and a child, though not always. The parent has more power over the child than the child has, is not functioning as love as a human being, and the child perceives it as survival. When that occurs, the child's energy field opens wide, becomes a sponge, (laughs) sucks all this energy into its structure. The power person, again, usually a parent, is genetically connected, so the very things that the power person hasn't resolved are structured within the child's structure as well, unresolved. And so it's easy to get it going, and it's easy for the child to just, in that situation, when those three things occur, to instill a power person dynamic in their mind. If that power person dynamic is instilled in a mind for the rest of that person's life until they resolve, understand, access, and remove what's hidden in their own hearts, their own unconscious, it will control them. It will determine every behavior of that person's life for the rest of their life, and that's what runs the world. The only three behaviors possible, and I just invite you to check out your own life and see how this works for you. When the power person dynamic is kicked in, it's always there under the surface, but it kicks in at higher levels of stress. When there's no stress, you'll do whatever you did to get along with your power person. When stress starts to build, you'll do whatever you did. You'll shift out of that and you'll move into a space where you do what you need to resist and survive with your power person. And then when you become ultra-stressed, that means your mind is loaded up with too many goals and you're ultra-stressed, you'll do what your power person did to you that you hated the most. Runs the world. And the solution there is only one, is forgiveness. I have to collapse the world of false perception. It will not work for me to engage in any of the pseudo-solutions of the non-being mind. That is, it won't help if I talk about it. It won't help if I explain it. It won't help if I convince others that I know and they don't. It won't help to use words to tell the truth about it. It won't help to argue with symbols of symbols to prove that you know. You hold the goal that's causing your mind to use that unresolved, unconscious, pained data to build your perception at the moment, and your perception is a lie. You've got to collapse the lie. You collapse the lie by the canceling of goals. Thank you for being with us. At the best year yet of your eternal life, it's an awesome gift to give the world. The world needs it. 